Just simply the gospel. Romans 1 verse 16. Paul is writing to the church at Rome. He says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Would you bow with me please for the remainder of part of the service and for the message. Lord, we stand in your need. We know that you are a gracious God. And Lord, we ask that you would oversee and attend your, to your word by your spirit. Holy Ghost of the living God, teach us Jesus in a new way. Show us your glory, Lord Jesus. Move upon us by your Spirit. Lord, let your word go forth with power under the anointing of the Spirit. That hearts and lives might be touched. That the believer might be lifted up and encouraged. That the crestfallen might be, be encouraged that the unbeliever might be convicted of sin and convinced of their need for you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The Lord gave me the inspiration for this message earlier in the week when I came across a little short video by a, by a doctor. He's a, he was an obstetrician gynecologist and he was sitting with a mask between his fingers like this and just holding it. And he was talking about the fact that we have been handcuffed by our masks. And that it possibly could eventually lead to actual physical handcuffs if things keep going like they are with the pandemic. So that got me to thinking, I'll tell you why in a minute, why I came to this message. You see, the world is coming apart at the seams. And it has happened so fast. When President Trump addressed the annual prayer break, national prayer breakfast on February the 6th of this year, he said polls showed that Americans' satisfaction with their lives was at an all-time high. And that then the China virus hit. And since March of 2020, America has gone from having the lowest unemployment numbers in history across all segments of our society and the greatest economy roaring in our history to today in August 2020, having the highest unemployment numbers in 40 years and a faltering economy. I read that even McDonald's is saying that they may run out of meat. And there are lines of cars, and I've seen them in videos, five miles long in certain places in our country lining up for food bags. With an estimated 12% of American households saying they don't have enough to eat. 25, in the, the re, a recent poll since this pandemic started up until about, just about two weeks ago, <clears throat> 25% of all 18 to 24 year olds have said that they have considered suicide. Uh, uh, overdoses have gone up 30 to 40%. 20% of all renters are behind in their rent. As of June, the National Guard had to be deployed in 24 states and District of Columbia. 2,000 cities in 50 states have had rioting. In 20 major cities, the murder rate was up 37% from last year. <coughs> we see some of the biggest names in retail business closing their doors. More and more, we see empty shelves at the grocery stores, at Walmart and other stores. I do the shopping, and I've commented that to a girl there, uh, you know, they send people out to collect up orders, and you come and pick it up. And I forget what it was I was looking for that day, but I've never found a time when I couldn't find it in a Kroger store. And I couldn't find it. She said, we don't get it. We're not getting our stuff. Farmers are plowing under their fields because there's no market for their crops. 
Pigs and cattle are being euthanized because so many of the meat processing plants are being shut are shut down. Christian pastors and churches are being threatened with fines because local and state governments of a particular party declare them non-essential. Courts are issuing cease and desist orders that churches must close while strip clubs and marijuana dispensaries and liquor stores are considered essential and, are, and must stay open. People are being ordered, not recommended, ordered to wear masks or risk being fined or jailed, and some are being fined and jailed. I saw a guy get handcuffed in a store in a video because he refused to wear a mask in a particular store. I even read... Last week, where the, where the former SEAL who killed Osama bin Laden was banned from one of our major airlines because he took off his mask to take a selfie. That's how bad it is getting. And we can clearly see coming down the pike a one-world money system with a one, ran by a one-world government which will be overseen by the Antichrist system. Now going back to the doctor that I referred to at the beginning of this message, he said, after saying that, he said, it is only the gospel of Christ that can break us out of the worst handcuffs of all, the handcuffs of sin, that bind people and will drag them all to hell if they don't receive and believe the gospel. What is the gospel? Anyone who's been a Christian for any length of time, even new Christians, knows what it means. It's from the Greek word euangelion, which means, from which we get the word evangelism, and it means good tidings or good news. When we proclaim the gospel, whether by preaching or teaching or conversation or by singing or by reading the Bible out loud, we are sharing good news. But it is more than just good news. It is the most wonderful, soul-liberating, saving, hell-destroying, demon-chasing word that anyone can ever hear. Hallelujah. It is truly the good news. Amen. In our text, Paul calls the gospel the power of God. That word power is from the Greek word dunamos and literally means strength, power, a force. The word dynamite, you know what dynamite can do? Dynamite comes from that Greek word dunamis. It says, he says it is the power of God unto salvation. Why? Because it has the power to save from sin all those who, quote, believe. Only by understanding the gospel can one really understand what the Bible means. The gospel is the story of a specific person. Jesus Christ, the Messiah of Israel, the God-man, the second person of the Trinity, and by His birth, His death, His burial, His resurrection, His, his ministry, his, his ascension to heaven, He fulfilled the Father's will, and now says, Whosoever will, let them come unto me and be saved. The gospel is the only true word of God. Amen. It is simple enough for a child to understand, but so profound that the greatest theologians have never been able to plumb its depths. The more it is read and studied, the more incredible it becomes. One paragraph. One sentence, a single word can pierce the darkness of a sin-burdened soul and bring immediate deliverance to the lovers of Christ that thrills the heart and brings tears of joy to our eyes Amen. as we stand before it in all, and it's all in majesty. I, I just, I was, I was reading, I started Luke and I just read the introduction to Luke where Luke says, I'm going to write the gospel. I started crying. Oh, how what? I said, oh, Brother Luke, what a great introduction to your letter. The, the Spirit touched me. Just that little paragraph. And as I was studying for this message, I, I was looking for a particular scripture in the book of Acts. I couldn't remember what book it was in. I knew it was after, after about 12 or 14. 
I, I have Bible Gateway on my computer, and I can throw up a whole chapter on one on the screen. And I started reading about chapter 13, and I couldn't really get through it. I must have went through 15 or 20 Kleenexes, wiping my eyes and blowing my nose, just simply reading the Word of God through the book of Acts. It is a thrilling work, and why? Because it's God's Word, is why. So let's look at this here for the next few minutes. The Gospel is called the Glorious Gospel. In 1 Timothy 1.11, Paul wrote, According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. That's why it is glorious, because it is God's gospel. Referring to the gospel, Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 2, verses 12 and 13, Now we have received not the things of the world, but the Spirit which is from God, that we might know the things that are freely given us of God, which things also we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. Amen. Pastor James A. Cross, who has gone on to be with the Lord, wrote in his book, The Glorious Gospel, which I have, he said this, Men and women stumbling along in the darkness of the world, once recovered from it, needed light to guide them along life's rugged pathway. So God gave them the glorious gospel to shine in the darkness of every age. He went on to write, The gospel could have as its source nowhere else but in the heart of God. Because no one understands the need, desire, and poverty of man's spiritual condition like God. It is a glorious gospel because it is God's gospel. Secondly, the gospel is also called the gospel of Christ or the gospel of His Son. Mark 1.1 1, 1 starts out. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Other than our text, other than uh, that text is called the gospel of Christ in Romans 15, 19 and 29. In 1 Corinthians 9, verses 12 and 18. In Galatians 1, verse 7. In Philippians 1, verse 27. And in 1 Thessalonians 3, verse 2. The gospel is about Jesus. He is the hero and the champion of the gospel. The apostle Paul said... When it pleased God to save me by His grace, He revealed His Son in me that I might preach Him among the nations. And he said immediately, I did not confer with flesh and blood. Galatians 1, verses 15 and 16. You see, the Gospel is not Muhammad's message or Buddha's message or Krishna's message. It is Christ's message. Amen? Amen? It is His gospel. It is His good news. And it is the central theme of the Bible. Amen. We're told that Jesus went about preaching His gospel that is His. In Matthew 4.23 it says, Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. In Mark 1, verse 14, we read, Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, the good news of the kingdom of God. And then in the next verse, he said, the time, Jesus said, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. In his book, A Ransom for Many, by Steve, Dr. Steve Wilmshurst, he comments on Mark 1.14. He says this, The gospel means a big announcement of a world-changing event. The time has come or the time has been fulfilled. The kingdom of God is near. He says the Jews knew their prophets had spoken about it centuries before. The kingdom of God arriving means that God comes to assert His authority publicly and openly here on earth. 
He goes on. At last, God would break into history and establish His everlasting kingdom. Jesus says, I am here to bring it in. He says, in effect, it is me. I am the gospel. I am the good news. So repent. Turn away from your past life and get ready for God to act. End quote. Friend, if Jesus said the time is at hand 2,020 plus years ago, how much more is the time at hand now that we should repent? Wake up! Whoever listens to this, wherever you are, I don't know. This goes out on YouTube and three Facebook pages and other people share it on their Facebook pages and I put it on Twitter and I've started putting it on BitChute, which is a Great Britain, uh, website Great Britain, wherever you're hearing this, the time is at hand. Repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thirdly, the gospel is called the gospel of peace. Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over our spirit with boundless love. I can't remember all the words of it. It's a song called Peace. And I have a song that I started called God will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are stayed on Him. I'm not finished, but it's the start of it. I'm always starting the song. <laughs> That's what songwriters do. I don't know. I'll I, I wait. <laughs> I got one of the coolest choruses I've ever got here this week. The Gospel of Peace. In Romans 10, 15, Paul wrote this. How shall they preach except they be sent? I thank God that He sent me. As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. Okay. I believe it. God said it. And bring glad tidings of good things. Just before this, in verses 9 and 10, He written, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. What he's saying is the reason it is the gospel of peace is because once a person believes it in their heart, receives it, and confesses it with their mouth, then and only then can anyone ever know true peace. Amen. True peace. Is only found through Christ. In Ephesians 6.15, which I preached a couple of weeks ago, Paul says that we should have our feet shod with the gospel of peace. Matthew Henry wrote on this text in his commentary. He said, The preparation of the gospel of peace signifies a prepared and resolved frame of heart to adhere to the gospel and abide by it which will enable us to walk with a steady pace in the way of religion. It is styled the gospel of peace because it brings all sorts of peace. Peace with God, peace with ourselves, and peace with one another. And lastly, the gospel is called the gospel of the grace of God. By grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God not works lest any man should boast Ephesians 2, 8, 9? In the book of Acts, Luke writes about Paul and the, the companions being at the city of Miletus. From there, he called for the elders of the church of Ephesus to come to him. He was on his way to Rome. He gave his final word of testimony to them. Luke recorded Paul's words in the book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 24. He said, but none of these things moved me. Well, first he said, I know that bond, bound, uh, chains are awaiting me. It's already been prophesied. But he said, none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear to myself that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus, what? To testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Amen. 
If anyone knew about the need for grace, it was Paul, the terrorizer of the early church, who held the coats of those who stoned to death Stephen, the deacon and the, one of the first deacons and the first martyr of the church. I always wonder how that worked in Paul's mind. Paul testified to the Jews. They were going to kill him in Jerusalem. He went to Jerusalem and they were going to kill him. They set themselves to kill him. And Licinius, a Roman centurion, saved him. But he allowed Paul to address the Jews. And he said this. He said that he persecuted this way. This way is the Christian way. He said, I persecuted this way unto death binding and delivering into prisons both men and women, as also the high priest bears me witness, and also all the council of elders, from whom I also received letters to the brethren and went to Damascus to bring in chains those who were there back to Jerusalem to be punished. Acts 22, verses 4 and 5. Paul confessed the same also before King Agrippa. Remember, he went to he appealed to Rome and he went to Festus and then he went they kept there two years and he went to Agrippa or they, Festus called Agrippa King Agrippa in. In Acts twenty six, he said this: Many of the saints I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests, and when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. I punished them often in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly enraged against them, I persecuted them even the foreign cities. Acts 26, verses 10 and 11. Can you see Paul giving this testimony, telling on himself? He knew that it was only through the gospel that he was delivered from darkness into light. While on the road to Damascus, when Jesus appeared before him and he was saved by grace, by the gospel of grace. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees, the tribe of Benjamin. He raised at the feet of Gamaliel, one of the greatest rabbis. Astute, kept the law to the best of his ability. But he needed grace to deliver him. Friends, I needed grace. I was a literal idol worshiper. I worshiped the so-called gods of wood and stone and metal. I worship the so-called gods of the sun and the wind god, so-called. I even worshiped a man as God, so-called. As a Hindu, I was taught the devil's original lie that we can become gods ourselves. It was only the gospel of grace that could deliver me. Not just me, but all who are Christ's. We Lord, help us to be witnesses of you. We needed grace. Amen. You may not have worshipped literal idols like I did, but you had your idols of pleasure or fame or money or job or career or excitement or whatever it might have been. And it was only the gospel of grace that delivered you too. All you who are who hear me now and who are not Christ's, who don't belong to Christ, you need grace. But listen, Hebrews 7.25 says, Wherefore He, Christ, is able also to save to the uttermost all that come unto Him by God, Amen. seeing He ever lives, to make intercession for them. He's alive, friends. That's why He can save and deliver. Amen. Amen. Muhammad's grave can be visited. Buddha's tooth, you can go see it. You can go see the graves of Confucius and his families. But there's no grave for Jesus. Amen. It's empty. Amen. He's a living Savior, and that's why He is able to save to the uttermost all those who come to Him. Amen. Hallelujah. There's nothing He cannot forgive. That word, uttermost, is the Greek word 
Pantales. And it means completely, perfectly, and utterly. So Christ can save you completely. He will save you perfectly. And He will save you utterly. All those who come to Christ. Now I want to talk for just a minute about some of the things that are not the gospel. You say, what? I want to tell you some of the things that are not the gospel. The gospel is in the Bible, but it is not the Bible. Whoa. Let me be clear. Every word, every syllable, every punctuation in the Bible is God's holy word written and is precious and his, is historically accurate. Amen. But the gospel means good news. And there is some bad news in the Bible. For instance, the wicked shall be turned into hell and with all the nations that forget God. That is in the Bible and it is terrible and it's true. But it is not the gospel. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. That's in the Bible. But it is not the gospel. Words spoken by the devil are in the gospel. And they are the words he truly spoke. And they're accurately portrayed. But his words are lies. He is a liar and the father of it, Jesus said. And they are not the gospel. Also, the gospel is not the Ten Commandments. As blessed as they are, being from the very hand of God, written on the tablets for Moses by God Himself, they are not the gospel. The law is not the gospel. It is the very opposite of the gospel. In fact, the reason the law was given was to show men and women that they could not keep it. Amen. To show them the need for the gospel. Amen. The law, says the Apostle Paul to the Galatians, it was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. But after Christ has come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. Galatians 3, verses, verse 24. The law could never save because no one could keep it. That's why God gave it. To show people that they needed grace. Except Christ. Christ kept it perfectly. Christ kept every bit of the law perfectly, perfectly, perfectly every point of it. And that's why Jesus had to come to bring the good news. So all those commandments that were against us, He put them on the cross and then got up on the cross and nailed, had Himself nailed to, to take them out of the way, the Scripture tells us. The Gospel is also not a call to amend our ways. It's not turning over a new leaf or pulling ourselves up by our own bootstraps. Or it's not a promise, I'm going to do better in the future. You know, they say, I want to get in church. Now, getting in church is a good thing. If you get in a church that preaches the gospel, that is. If you get in a church that preaches that sin is sin and hell is hot and heaven is real and only Jesus saves. If you get in that kind of church, it's good to go to church. But if you go to any other kind of church, you might as well just go down to the bar on the street. On the corner. Amen. Don't matter. So I'm not saying church is good. But to say, I want to get in church because a lot of people get saved in, in true churches who preach the true gospel. But... The gospel is not getting in church. The gospel is not getting baptized or putting your name on a church roll or rolling rosary beads or saying ten Our Fathers and a hundred Hail Marys or rolling ro uh, mama beads like I did saying oh whatever whatever for a million times or praying five times to Mecca or any of these things. All there are, there are certain things that are good and right, and moral things and good things to do. You know, turning over a new leaf, that's good. Pulling up your bootstrap, that's good. Amending your ways, that's good. These things do not constitute the gospel. The gospel is not good advice, it is good.
Good news. It's a command to believe, be believed. The gospel is not about giving up bad habits. It's not a call to duty or reformation or to behave a better way than in the past. Jesus made plain to the Jew, Nicodemus, what the point of the gospel was and is all about. He said, except a man be born again, except unless a person is born again, they cannot see. He can't even see it. Not alone enter it. He can't even see it, the kingdom of God. Except one is born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And two verses later he said, then Nicodemus said, what? I don't understand. I've got to get back in my mom's womb and be born again. You know, when a woman births a baby, the water breaks. So Jesus said, no, you got to be born of the water, meaning physically born, and born of the Spirit. He said, except a man be born of the water, physical birth, and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. John 3, 5. Everywhere that Paul and his companions or any of the apostles went, they preached the gospel of the kingdom that Christ brought. And showed that the only way to get into that kingdom was by being born again. A second birth. And the only way to get that new birth was through believing the gospel. The good news. Quoting John MacArthur again. By the way, John MacArthur, God bless him. They issued, they, they've had him in court four times in the last week or two. Grace Community Church is continuing to meet, continuing to gather, gather. The chief of police of Los Angeles, he said, told him, I will never enter your church to arrest you or anybody else. He may lose his job over that Mayor Garcetti, a dictator. God bless you, John MacArthur. Having church. They issued a cease and desist order. Can't have church. Anyway, he said this in closing. Saving faith consists of three elements. Mental. The mind understands the gospel and the truth about Christ. Romans 10, verses 14 through 17. Secondly, emotional. One embraces the truthfulness of those facts with the heart, with sorrow over sin, and with joy over God's mercy and grace. Romans 6, verse 17, Romans 15, verse 13, and third, volitional. The sinner acts. Yes, it is God's grace that leads us to repentance. It is God that opens our hearts to desire Him. And puts us in places where we can hear His Word. But He doesn't confess for us. The sinner, once they have accepted mentally and embraced it emotionally, they have to act. How? By submitting their will to Christ's will. And trusting Him alone and only as the only hope for salvation. Romans 10 verse 9. And then he says, genuine faith always also produces authentic obedience. Read John 14. Why callest thou me, Lord, Lord, do not the things that I say? He that loves me will keep my commandments. John 8, 31. Now we don't keep them to, to, be, to stay saved. We keep them because we love them. No, we don't ever keep them perfectly, but we are striving to. We are desiring to. We are wanting to. John 14, 21 through 24. This is the gospel. The things I preached, and there's others I could go into also, but we don't have time. This is the one and the only gospel. There is no other saving message. I'm sorry, my Hindu friends, if you're listening. My yogic friends, if you're listening, there is no other saving gospel. It is the good news that saves. Believe it and receive it today and be saved. 
Hallelujah. Amen. If you get ready to come to the music, would you bow with me, please, for the closing prayer? Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the gospel. We thank you for this amazing book 